Hi, welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History. Where am I taking you back to today? Well, I'm actually taking you to the Stuart period, 1604, but it's about a Tudor man. But on this day in history, the 29th of February, 1604, John Whitgift, Archbishop of Canterbury, died at Lambeth Palace, the Archbishop's Palace in London. He was the last Archbishop of Canterbury in Queen Elizabeth I's reign and had been in office since 1583. Here are some facts about this famous Archbishop of Canterbury. John Whitgift was born in around 1530 or 1531 and was the eldest son of Henry Whitgift of Great Grimsby, Lincolnshire and his wife Anne Dinewell. Whitgift's uncle Robert provided for the boy's education, first at the Augustinian House, where he was abbot in Wellow, and then at St Anthony's School in London, Queen's College Cambridge and Pembroke College. He graduated BA in 1554. In 1555, he became a fellow at Peterhouse College, where he obtained his master's, his MA, in 1557, rather than fleeing into exile, as other Protestants did in Mary I's reign. He appears to have been protected by the Vice-Chancellor Andrew Pern, his good friend. In 1560, following the accession of Queen Elizabeth I, he was ordained deacon at Ely, and then made a priest, and he also acted as the Bishop of Ely's chaplain. He regularly denounced the Pope as the Antichrist in his sermons. He obtained his Bachelor of Theology from Peterhouse in 1563 and was appointed Lady Margaret Professor of Divinity, becoming known for his anti-papal stance. Quite an outspoken man. Although he was against the wearing of the surplice originally, he eventually sided with government policy and preached in its defence. His support of the government brought him favour from William Cecil and helped his career enormously. He obtained his doctorate in theology in 1567 and was made Regis Professor of Divinity. He was also Master of Pembroke College temporarily before becoming Master of Trinity College. Queen Elizabeth I called him her White Gift, a play on Whitgift, obviously, because of his talent for preaching. She also called him her Little Black Husband. In 1571, Whitgift was elected Dean of Lincoln and became Vice-Chancellor at Cambridge in 1573. He became Bishop of Worcester in 1577. Whitgift is known for his religious disagreements in the pulpit and in pamphlets with Puritan Thomas Cartwright, who was forced into exile. As far as Whitgift's personal faith is concerned, his biographer, William Joseph Shields, writes of his Calvinist theology and how he believed that scripture was central to defining the nature of the church. During his time as Bishop of Worcester, he was very concerned with recusancy and acted against Catholics in his diocese. On the 14th of August 1583, following the death of Edmund Grindle, Whitgift was nominated as Archbishop of Canterbury. He was eager to reform the church and to take action against Catholics and those who didn't attend church. He upset Puritans in the church with his endorsement of the Book of Common Prayer as the only prayer book that should be used in public worship. Further anti-Puritan measures followed. In 1588, Whitgift was one of those targeted in the Marprelate controversy, with the tracts attacking the established church, referring to Whitgift as that miserable and desperate caitiff, wicked John Whitgift, the Pope of Lambeth. Whitgift cared for the poor. One Christmas, he and his household sat down to eat with the poor, and he would top up the poorer livings in his diocese, and he founded an almshouse in 1595, and then a school. He also encouraged bishops to remind their clergy and the wealthy in their areas of their duty to the poor. Whitgift was at Queen Elizabeth's bedside when she died on the 24th of March 1603 and acted as chief mourner at her funeral. He was also at the council that proclaimed King James VI of Scotland as King James I of England and provided the new king with a report on the church in England. In February 1604, Whitgift caught a cold and then suffered a stroke while dining at Whitehall. 
He died on this day in history, the 29th of February 1604, and he was buried on the 27th of March 1604 in the chapel of St Nicholas at Croydon Minster. He made significant bequests to the poor in his will and also left provisions for his school and hospital. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 29th of February 1528, Scotland's first Protestant martyr was burnt to death, theologian Patrick Hamilton. I talked about Hamilton in last year's video for the 28th and 29th of February, and I'll give you a link to that video in the description so you can enjoy that one too. Well, enjoy is a bit of a weird word for burning at the stake, but, but you know what I mean. Enjoy the Tudor history of it. You can subscribe to this channel by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live. And you can, of course, give me a like and leave a comment. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye. <laughs>